long ago, our ancestors were trapped behind the walls by the great cataclysmo. Those who breathed the air became cursed, transforming into abominations we call horrors. For centuries, we've been surrounded by the monolithic structures of our city walls towering over us. There is a legend, though, of one city that existed without walls and flourished for many days. Cut, 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 cut. Marion, why do you always write the script like this for me? Get out of here. I'll, I'll, I'll do this myself, okay? I'm a better writer than you anyways. <clears throat> the game Cataclysma was recently released into early access on Steam. I've been really enjoying it, and thus my brain was like, Game fun. Game challenging. Challenge run? Cataclysmo is a strategy game where you play base builder by day and defender from horrors by night. You normally do this by building walls. The higher, the better. But I decided to make this challenge. Can you survive 90 days without walls? Why not 100, you ask? Since that's better for SEO. In all due time, my plucky YouTube viewer. So basically, I need to use my troops and traps to defend my citadel for as long as I can. Now, as every good runner knows, we start off with a few practice attempts. I really want to experiment with the building techniques and determine in which order I should be getting upgrades. Cataclysmo's building system is really well done. It actually tries to make you maintain structural integrity. This ain't Minecraft, my friend. You gotta support that shit or it will fall. In my case, I want as little as I can to be exposed to the horrors since it will not have high health, and all of our troops will come crashing down to the hungry mouths below. Surviving the Cataclysmo requires a few key resources to build a thriving civilization. Wood, stone, minerals, citizens, and oxygen. Oxygen is a key resource here because each unit and structure requires oxygen to build and maintain. Oxygen can only be siphoned from atop tall structures that have to be protected. Wood and stone are pretty self-explanatory, building materials for the respective block types. Minerals are mined when you mine stone and are used for advanced research, units, and structures. Most buildings and units have a citizen cost as well, since you need to employ people for these different jobs. That's the basics, I'll explain more as we go. Unfortunately, my first couple runs I didn't record because I wasn't thinking. But the basic gist of it is I tried to build structures off the citadel to allow troops to be safe and made it so they would be able to defend from all sides. That didn't work so great due to the fact that you need structural support that had to be exposed to the horrors. Attempt four, I found the most luck with this approach and things went well, making it all the way to night 25. The big issue was that I kept losing too many structures at night and then spent all day rebuilding. In the end, I lost the battle of attrition but I learned something very valuable about the horror AI. Normally they are attracted to any building between them and the Citadel, going out of their way to destroy it. But if a building is obscured by trees or cliffs, it's ignored. This gave me the idea for the next attempt. If I built all of my support structures in a location that was obscured from the horrors and not in the path of the Citadel, maybe I could avoid having to constantly rebuild. Each attempt has a randomly generated map. So I loaded up a new save to see what kind of terrain generation I would get. This happened to be the perfect seed for this challenge, and boy will you see why. Anyways, before we get to the town construction part of this, uh, everybody say hi to Iris. She's a master scholar with magic powers to match. She is akin to a hero unit in this game. She plays an important part in this tale, as she can get active abilities to help keep back the tides of darkness. First things first, time to stretch my legs, scout the area, and look for any groves for me to build my city. Now you always gotta keep two things in mind when you're building things. One, you can only build in city limits, which can be expanded with a territory beacon. And all buildings need to have a clear path to the citadel's entrance. If one of them their beacons is destroyed, all control of the structures in that area is severed. In the previous attempt, I lost because I lacked the supplies to build another replacement beacon for my hidden base, leaving me unable to restore my defenses in time. I located two very promising areas, one near the citadel that was a little iffy, and another perfect spot not too far. The second spot had some horrors who lived there, and I didn't have the troops at the time to take them on. We'll come back to them later and Bring them freedom from life or unlife or whatever horrors are. 
I build a barracks to start recruiting more troops. Right now, we can only make bowmen, who are glass cannons. I start each attempt with very limited building options. But each night you survive, you get upgrade points that can be used to spend to buy new blueprints for units and structures. Since these upgrades are directly tied to the survival of each day, I need to choose very carefully. We survive the first night without issue. Iris is the best as always, and we get our first upgrade. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I choose to use my first point on something that weird? Well, let me tell you. I want to keep my building footprint small, so if I can have stairs that can work sideways, I can build tall structures with a smaller footprint. Night two, I manage to beat them back, and I spend my points to hire some lobbers. Lobbers are great units. They have high health, and they do AoE damage. They can tank attacks from a horror for a decent amount of time. Once I trained up some brothers, we liberate the second concealed clearing for the good guys. I establish a foothold and leave a guard in place, just in case it's not as concealed as I thought. You may have noticed those arrows showing up right before night falls. This is the horrors just giving us a heads up of what they're bringing and where they're coming from. Right now, they continue to come from the south, but at any point, they could come from all directions. Next few days went fine. I clear out more of the clearing. As turns out, there's some squatters still living there. This allows me to build to my heart's content. Damn, we got a regular old town up in this bitch. I make sure to next unlock the banner enhancement after the next couple waves. This banner gives units adjacent to it a small damage boost, which can be key to quickly dealing with enemy horrors. So that means we have to have static deployment of troops to receive said bonus. I almost screwed the pooch on night six. I expected units to come from a certain way, but they bypass my units and head for the citadel. I send in the troops, which pulls them away from the banners. With a bit of microwing, it's not much of a problem. I learn from this mistake and establish spots for my troops closer to where the enemies spawn. We all know spawn camping is a legitimate strategy. I want to next make sure to pick up the skill upgrades for my units because I want to increase their DPS and provide additional effects every so often. The early game is all about building and buffing my military because flesh walls is all I got. This does mean I have to neglect some important upgrades for oxygen generation and citizen creation. Because of this, my clearing sprawl must grow. I mean, a bit of asphyxiation between friends? Oh, that's death. Whoops. Wow, uh, this long to get to that joke, huh? Well, uh, night 10 approaches. This is where I better learn how to position my unit types, which is good to know. As I mentioned, lobbers have much more health than bowmen. Positioning them towards the front of the group will allow them to protect the soft and squishy bow boys. Iris's position is very important here as well, since she does high AoE damage. Night 10 comes, it goes. These early waves are easy mode. I decided it was time to make the clearings more efficient, since the resources they collected are lugged a long distance to the citadel, which is causing me to have to wait a long time while they take their time lugging heavy materials. You're telling me carrying like 30 stacks of wood and 30 stacks of stone takes a while to walk, like uh, several miles? <laughs> the warehouse enhancement lets you build additional places for citizens to deposit resources, which makes gathering them much faster. The warehouse also provides research for improved resource gathering, allowing me to collect more per minute than I did previously. At this point, I take the knowledge from my previous attempts to use build spots in the Citadel for units to get buffs without the worry of them getting eaten. The horror is like a balanced breakfast after all, especially now that they are starting to come from more directions. Now the troops are spread thinner than my hair. No, you don't get a hair picture, thank you very much. Use your imagination, God. We also now get these new enemy types called centaurs. They are tougher and when they die, they spawn horror eggs that taste so good on toast. Well, provided you can cook them before they hatch and hit you with the permadeath. To ensure they get cooked accordingly, I unlock the fire arrows enhancement. This will make it so any adjacent bowmen will get fire arrows, which deal damage over time. There is the same for the lobbers, which is poison, but I am poor right now. To make matters worse, we got the huts invading who spawn tons of horror eggs and they are tough as hell. 
Let's just say they won't cheat you wanna wanna your wookie ah ah ah. That probably doesn't work here. If you translate it into hut, but uh, references maybe? I branch out a bit in the trapping department and buy me some new claw traps. These will slow enemies caught in them down. Man, those are some big traps. Now there is a unit designed to slow horrors called captors. They are weak units like the bowmen, but they can be very useful for slowing things down. But at the moment I want to prioritize stronger units so that I have room to spread out in different directions. Eventually though, Having a captor in each group would be nice. Claw traps have a limited lifespan and can be expensive to build, so they have diminishing returns. As the days go on, I continue to build up my town to afford more resource gathering. I also grab an upgrade that gives Iris the ability to do AoE damage in a large area every so often. Things are getting pretty hairy as we approach night 20. Enemies are getting a little too close for comfort. I make sure to snag an upgrade to my Citadel's health so that I will have a buffer of HP in case my units don't pull through. Night 20 is soon upon us, and I made sure to build up my troop placements with extra enhancements to help. While well, things go okay, I end up losing most of the troops defending the rear of the Citadel, so I have to spend time rebuilding my army. I buy another army cap upgrade to stem the increasing tide. So yeah, on night 21, I made the mistake of missing the fact that enemies were coming from a third direction. So I quickly had to reposition and build encampments for my troops. What, you expect me to look game? Shit. This is the first wave to include exploders. These units get close to a target before detonating after a short period of time. I need to watch out and move troops out of the way when it's in that case. Whatever, I made it through, that's all that matters. I snag both the quarry and sawmill upgrades to gather resources faster but I need more minerals. I decide to expand my first clearing to add an additional quarry. I like to spend most of my nights hover parenting my troops, moving them between areas to deal with the increasing nightly dread. I'm also finding I'm running out of usable space in my second hidden town. So I grab the homestead upgrade so that houses give me more citizens than normal. Still just as cramped, but look, nicer windows in a banner. What's not to love when you're 30 stories in the air with your eight relatives? This does increase the oxygen upkeep, so I'm going to need some breathing room shortly. I also need more high level structures. So mine them minerals, my townsfolk, or you won't be getting leftover horror meat. I put another quarry in the first clearing to help with this. Maybe it's a little bit more in the open. Maybe it's not. It's up to the HOA. No, I mean the Horrors Offense Association, silly. And here they come on night 23 of all things, and they do pay a visit. And behold, I'm a little too close to some major highways. They see nothing but some juicy meals in the form of miners. With no units to spare, I watch as they demolish everything on that side. Luckily it's much less of an issue because that's not a very important clearing, but it is sad to see all those resources go. And nothing else of value of course just the resources. I rebuild as fast as I can, but I forgot to pause time and the night sneaks up on me. I pause the reconstruction to redirect my troops before it's too late. I do beat them back and I grab some upgrades for the banner and specialist boosts like the fire arrows and throwing poison. You think fire arrows are cool? Well, how about hell arrows and a banner with two spikes at the bottom? Oxygen is becoming a big problem, not generating it fast enough after losing so many gatherers. Even after I build replacements, I need to look at getting an upgrade soon. And after the next wave, I snag the oxygen gatherer upgrade. So the town is no longer left breathless. I do manage to make it through the next couple of days without issue. So that's something. I make sure to pick up the master warehouse, which improves the warehouse storage and provides additional upgrades to collecting resources. I currently don't have enough oxygen storage to afford the mineral speed upgrade, so I need to save up to get oxygen silos. But first, I need to start gathering a late game resource of mist fuel. I also get spike traps to do a bit of damage to enemies as they approach my unit encampments. Night 28 is where things heat up. So turns out horrors see traps and are like, nah dog, I'm going round. Shocking I know, but they bypass my encampments and head straight to the citadel. I put my units at major risk as my living barrier and use Iris to really AOE these suckers. 
Rebuilding after this one was swift because they are still coming from all directions tonight. The first group in the south really does a number on my defenses, making it difficult to defend. I mount a valiant defense and use excess resources to quickly recruit replacements. What do you mean you're sleeping, son? Get out there and bloody kill those monsters. 30 they say it's a milestone in one's life, and boy was I worried about day 30. With resources low, I send troops around the map to collect free-floating resources guarded by lone horrors. While this is going on, the old horror detector tells us they're coming from the south alone tonight. I prepare the defenses with enhancements galore. The horrors don't know what hit them, and it's on to the 30s as we secure our mist condenser upgrade. In summary, you suck up the dangerous mist, and you use it for constructing advanced technology. The next tier of units will help immensely, and they need mist to fuel them. We begin with the old mist suck job, so that I can afford to buy me some cannons. The night doesn't claim us today, and first thing in the morning, I build a bomber's workshop to help start recruiting cannoneers. I, I mean, the name's pretty self-explanatory, but there are units that fire cannons and make explosions. Given enemy density as we get further on, I better see more gives with these ladies present. With cannons at our backs, our 30s adventure continues. As expected, 30s are where things ramp up. I spend a lot more time micromanaging units and rebuilding defenses. Luckily, the army grows in numbers, procuring more units and having more resources for building traps. Night 34, disaster pounces. A horror finds its way into the second clearing. In a panic, I send units to eliminate it, but I draw in other horrors who destroy my beacons connecting me to the clearing. This cuts the citadel off from the resources that area produces. I slap a new one down, but the new beacon is destroyed as well. We manage to beat them back, but as morning dawns, I don't have the resources to rebuild the beacons. This was the same thing that killed the last attempt. Now in Cataclysmo, reversing time is a mechanic. I had no choice but to reverse time and try the previous day again. Last night's victory had been tough to get, and I mainly got it because the horrors were distracted destroying stuff. I also had to post guards in the clearing now to prevent the previous night's events. But luck is on my side, and for whatever reason, the horrors don't choose to attack the clearing this time, and I'm able to beat them once again. I grab me the enhancement upgrade for cannoneers to improve their damage in the coming waves, and I surround the citadel in an army of spikes. C didn't use wall. Walls of spikes are a no. Army of spikes is a yes. I build raised platforms as well for my units to improve range with the terrain. The thing I really need next is the upgrade that allows us to recruit hunters. Weathering the long nights, I save up enough to procure them. Now these units need height to be effective. They have a huge range and they get increased critical chance from these heights. This allows them to kill lower health units instantly, which will be very useful. But since I can't build walls, I have nowhere to put them that is high without putting them in danger. These are expensive units, and they only have 10 health. A fall like that might kill them. I am also now starting to see shielded horror units, basically units with two health bars who take reduced damage. I also snagged the partisan unit, a tanker unit that fires a repeating crossbow. I find myself in the dusk of night 45, trying to rebuild after the previous night with the new units. They are coming from everywhere, and my units are spread thin. Initially, things go well, keeping my units on their raised platforms, defending the cannoneers since they're keeping the enemy unit count low. But the raised platforms prove to be the downfall here. See, when a structure is destroyed with a unit on it, the unit falls and is stunned for a short period of time. In the case of cannoneers, they need four squares to operate properly. If any of those squares is destroyed before the cannoneer falls, the unit will do nothing until there are four squares again. This is what happens on my right flank. Then when she does fall, the horrors swarm and kill her. My other sides are too busy to render aid. I become overwhelmed, and the citadel is destroyed. Now we know this isn't the end, thanks to Iris, but I need to come up with a better strategy. This time I reposition my unit so that the cannoneer is harder to get to, and I make sure to redistribute units based on where they're needed during the battle. While I am able to win, the cost is great, and I lost a ton of units. I quickly rebuild, I sell some structures to do so in a timely fashion, and I build many new resource gathering buildings. It's not enough though. I'm overwhelmed once again, and the citadel falls. 
I tried different strategies and unit placements, but they all have the same result. Then I remember what I learned from previous attempts. I can build on the Citadel without creating walls that block horrors. This would allow me to put units higher without putting them at risk. I put as many hunters, partisans, and bowmen up there as I can. Initially, it doesn't work, and I realize without some kind of range increasing upgrade, it doesn't allow all the units to be effective. I use my remaining points to grab the Merlon upgrade, which allows me to build Merlon blocks on stone structures that upgrade the range of units next to them. But I am still really limited here. Bowmen just don't have really great range, even high up. And I have a lot more of those than hunters and partisans. I want to fit more units up high as well, but I need some of the stone block upgrades, which I can't afford. I try one more time, hoping to pull through the wave and get enough to afford the upgrade. But once again, the Citadel falls. Well, if it works for the Avengers, maybe I can make it work for me. I travel back a whole day, because even though Night 46 was hard as well, this gives me more upgrade points to work with. I beat Night 46 again, but 47 still kicks my ass. One more try. This time I concentrate my units more effectively to draw the horrors into range of the archers. This works, and I make it through the night. These small changes bring me over the hump, and I'm able to survive all the way to 50. On the day before, I get things really set up for my high up units. Upgrades, baby! I replace all the bowmen with mostly hunters, which are better in the late game. Partisans are great at stripping shields when low down, so I keep most of them on the ground. Plus, they're less likely to die given their strong nature. I make it to day 50 without much worry. Luckily, I plan for the horror to split off towards the Citadel, and our citizens sleep soundly. I'm about halfway-ish there, and at this point, I have most of the important upgrades. Though there is one more unit type, the Ballista, I have not yet got. Mostly because they're designed to deal with horrors at choke points. And without the walls, we're not really making too many of those, so they're less effective. Things are going very well for me. I blast through wave after wave, collecting upgrades as I go. I do build the ballista units, and since they need to be high up, I build a little platform for them on the citadel. I keep my townsfolk happy in their little glades, and apart from some difficulty on wave 59, leaving the 50s as a time to be alive. I do learn to position my ballistas even higher with my hunters as well, which also helps immensely. At this point, I have the strat down on how and where to position things to best protect myself. Nights are getting long now, lasting more than 10 minutes. Night 60 breezes by, and as a wonderful surprise, there was an update while I was filming. This allowed units to become veteran units based on their number of kills. This gave them a big bonus to damage, which helped a ton. And with that nail in the horror's coffin, it's time for the montage. We've made it! I can finally explain why we are at 90 days, not 100. See, originally this was meant to be survive as long as I can video, but after night 50 I decided why not go to 100 days? Near the end it took a long time between nights, until night 90. I waited 4 hours, and it never ended. I tried reloading and waiting again, still nothing. So yeah, this is how I only survived 90 days in Cataclysma without walls. Yay? I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's a bit different from my normal kind of game. If you want to see more, please let me know. If by some miracle the devs see this, thank you so much for the wonderful game. I cannot wait to see where it goes next. I can see so much potential in such an interesting and mysterious world. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm a sucker for world building, but you know, still pretty cool. Well, so long, farewell. Thanks for all the fish.